Mabuhay. I thank the Lord for His mercies and love manifested throughout the year 2019. And even though some of us have experienced hardships and challenging situations, and yet we were able to overcome them because of God's sustaining grace, and with much hope that He will continue to uphold us with His mercy and love as we face this great year 2020. Let us use every opportunity to serve Him. <clears throat> Minsan, may mga pagkakataon, na nagkikita-kita tayo kasama ng ating mga kamag-anak, kaibigan, kapitbahay, or mga kaklase sa isang party or pagkitipon-tipon. At kinokumusta natin? Ang ngunit kadalasan ang sagot ay ganun pa rin naghahanap buhay. And 10 or 20 years after, we met them again and ask the same question. And the answer is, ganon pa rin naghahanap buhay. That's why I ask this question to myself. Kailan pa ba kaya nila matatagpuan yung buhay na hinahanap nila? And if they found it, is it the real life? Truly, the same questions that we hear from the people around us today. Questions about life. And they are asked in this many ways. Like, what is life? What is the purpose of life? What is the reason to live? And how can we live a genuine or real life? So, to start living this year, 2020, we will answer that question of how can we live a real life in God's perspective. And in answering these questions, we will use the acronym REAL LIFE. REAL LIFE always starts with the letter R. R means restored relationship with God or renew our relationship with God. Pagbabalik sa Diyos. Remember, man was created in the image of God. In Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27, God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. But what happened? They disobeyed the command. Genesis 3, 6, He and his wife ate the forbidden fruit. Although at that moment, they didn't immediately die physically, and it was later. But they die spiritually. Their relationship with God was broken or cut off, and sin came unto all men that all have sinned in Romans 5.12. God condemned them to eternal damnation. And as a result, we became separated from God. We became His enemies, but God provided us a way to come back to restore our relationship and fellowship with him and what are the steps in order that man restore his relationship or fellowship with God step number one acknowledge that you have a problem and what is that sin sin that made us separated from God our parents Adam and Eve chose to disobey God by eating that forbidden fruit. We inherited our sin, Romans 5.12, and it was imputed to us. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, 
No, not one. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And people have tried in many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God or attempted to reach God through good works, morality, and religion. Yet man is still separated from God. Isaiah 59 verse 2, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. So therefore, no bridge reaches God except the cross. Step number two, believe on the cross as the only bridge to reach God, Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6, He is the way, truth, and the life. Jesus Christ was hanged and died at the cross. He was buried but rose from the grave. He paid the penalty for our sin and breeds the gap between God and man. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to, to God. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Step number 3. Confess Jesus Christ with your mouth. And this should be our response. To believe and receive Christ as our Savior. God has provided the only way for men to reach God and restore their relationship. And its person must make a choice. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Receive Him by inviting Him personally to, you, to, to our heart. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. That's a question for you, my friend, today. Will you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now? And if you do so, here's how you can receive Christ. First, admit that you are a sinner and you cannot save yourself. Not your own way, your good works, your accomplishment, or being religious. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves it is the gift of God not by works so that no one can boast number two believe the gospel that Jesus Christ died for you buried but in the third day rose from the dead step number three repent or be willing to turn from your sins to God and number four receive him through prayer invite Jesus Christ to come into your life as Savior and Lord maybe you would ask this question how would I pray to receive Christ? And you can pray this prayer whether you are alone or you'll be praying with me right now. Dear Lord, I know I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I try to save myself in my own way, but I can't. I believe that your son Jesus died for me and for my sins. I want to turn away from my sins. I now invite Jesus to come into my heart as my Savior. I want to trust.
trust and follow him as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you have prayed this prayer, God gives you the power to become his child. John 1.12 Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So receiving Christ is just the beginning of a wonderful and new real life in Christ.